Welcome to The Spotlight, the podcast where veterans and military spouses connect and share how their military experience has transformed their lives and their businesses. Here's your host, Bob Loudon. Hey, this is your host, Bob Loudon, founder of the Veteran Crowd Network, the network that brings veterans and veteran-led businesses together with each other and the resources they need to prosper. And you are tuning into the spotlight. Hey, everybody, this is Bob Loudon, host of the spotlight on the Veteran Crowd Network, uh, welcoming today Heather Earls. She is a writer, a blogger, an author. She is the spouse of a retired special forces officer and guest on our program today. Kind of interesting. I love the play on words. She's got a podcast called Urban Wisdom, H-E-R-B, Urban, Urban Wisdom and Natural Living. Heather, welcome to the program. Thank you for stepping into the spotlight today. Thanks, Bob, for having me. I'm excited. You are in somewhere in North Dakota. I've got to ask, you know, is the snow off the ground? Has spring sprung up there yet? I hope it it has. has, But just last week, we actually got a frost. So no snow, but it was a little chilly. And then this week, it's about 100 degrees. Oh, my goodness. What part of North Dakota do you guys live in? eastern part so we are close to Fargo but far enough away that we keep our distance how about that okay how did you end up landing in North Dakota you you grew up in Montana right yep small town Montana girl Um, my husband we met in Wyoming and we sold the business we had up there which was a lodge and restaurant and then his father was getting older so he wanted to come back and was close to him to take care of him so we ended back in Rocky's hometown. What part of Wyoming were you guys in? We were in like the Colorado, Wyoming region up in the mountains. I tell you what, you, you've got some backcountry roots. I'm, I'm fascinated. I, it's just a beautiful part of the country, Wyoming, you know, Yellowstone, all that part of it. Northern Colorado, Montana. Uh, that's a different part of the country. It is, but I love it. I love the West. So anywhere rural, anywhere um, where you can see country, different kinds, that's where I'm at. That's fantastic. All right. So, so let's, let's start with the blog, uh, Urban Wisdom. Like I said, I thought that was an interesting play on words. Uh, Definitely not urban. Uh, (laughs) So, uh, and natural living, you have a lifetime of experiences, I think that you share uh, in your blog. Can you talk to our guests, our, our guests, our listeners about uh, what your what your thrust is on the Urban Wisdom podcast and what you're focused upon? Yeah, absolutely. So it started off, um, even though I'm younger, I kind of grew up old school. So we did our canning, um, butchering, um, just living off the land because I grew up in the country. And then, um, you know, you talk to people now, a lot of younger people, People don't know how to do those things, but want to. And so I was just thinking, I have all this knowledge. How can I use that to help somebody? Because I love helping people. So I created the urban wisdom and the play on words, because even if you live in an urban area, you can have a garden, you can have um, pots and herbs and tomatoes. And so you can grow vegetables, herbs anywhere, and just add to the health um, of your overall being, you know, natural natural living, natural foods. So that's kind of where that started from. How, how long have you been doing the uh, podcast? So podcast, I started January, 2018. Um, and I had no idea how to do one. I just looked it up. I'm like, this, I want to do this to help people. So I was self-taught and um, just ran with it. Interesting. So, so I I didn't know how to do a podcast either. You know, I, I hired some, uh, uh, some college interns and said, I, I want to do a podcast, figure it out. Uh, It's kind of the way it started, didn't it? You just jumped right in. Yeah. Now, now you have a website called heatherearls.com and uh, you're pretty active on social media. Uh, You, did you start out first as a blogger though? Yeah, so that was funny. So my blog started in February of 2016. And before that, I was one of those people that said, you know, anybody who blogs doesn't have enough to do. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I realized blogging is the perfect way to share again, um, to teach people, to share, you know, something that I enjoy. And I was just getting a lot of questions from other people about how to do. And so the blogging was the first step, just write out articles. And I don't know about you, but I'm a pretty visual learner. And so I wanted something where there'd be pictures and, you know, step-by-step -step instructions where people would be like, hey, this is a one-stop place where we can go and find out how to use this remedy or this herb or recipes, you know, healthy recipes, or, you know, how do you butcher a chicken? <laughs> So that's kind of where I started. Did you also do some woodworking? Is that uh, an, an, another thing that, uh, that you talk about in your blog? Yeah, so my dad is a carpenter and we grew up just helping him on all of his jobs. And so um, I actually just completed my dining room table. We had a, a tree, an evergreen tree out in the front. We needed to chop down because it was gonna fall on the house. And so had that plane by a local guy um, milled and um, just built that table. So yeah, I love woodworking. How did, uh, all right, so, all right, let's back up. Have you got like all, have you got a wood shop? Have you got all the tools and everything that you need? Have you, uh, you know, I, I'm just curious, this is fascinating. You're, you're, you're an uncommon uh, character here. <laughs> yeah, so I have a lot of the tools. I wouldn't mind some more. They're kind of on my Christmas wish list for this year. And um, yeah, I just use the garage I have or outside. I do a lot of my projects in the summertime when I'm not freezing. So yeah, I just grew up handiwork. I guess we needed to do it um, to help my dad. And so all of us siblings just kind of learn the trade. That's uh, fascinating. So how, how, how cold does it get where you live? I'm just curious. What, uh, <laughs> what was the low this past winter? It was 50 below at one point this past winter. And without factoring in the wind? Without the wind. So we've reached up to 70 below with the wind chill. I don't even want to think about how, I think I've been one time I was in a situation where it was 20 below and the wind was blowing fast enough to make the wind chill in the, in that range. I mean, it's blowing 20, 30 miles an hour. I don't know, you know what the math was, but how, I mean, goodness gracious, how do you do that? It's crazy. So this year when I went out at those temperatures, cause we have animals, we have to take care of them and we have this nice big barn, but to get to the barn, I went outside and I took a breath, Bob, and I couldn't breathe. The ice crystals formed up in my nose and in my lungs. So I had to step back inside really quick and then just wrap up, you know, with your scarves and whatnot, just to stay warm to get to the barn. So um, a lot of people in the country don't think there's a place that's like that anymore, but there is. <laughs> it, it, do you put heat into the barn for the animals or is it just their physical presence enough to, for them to stay warm at that, at that frigid temperature? So it's a little of both. Um, it depends on how many cows we have at the time. If there is enough, then their physical, you know, heat is enough for the cows. And then we have chickens. And this year we just redid um, their chicken pen so it would stay a little warmer because um, they were getting a little frostbite before. <laughs> I, I know I sound like a city slicker, but oh my goodness, I can't, I can't imagine. My wife grew up on a farm. She's all the time telling me, you know, about raising hogs and cattle and all the things that, that you that you learn and very much looks fondly upon that time in her life you know and uh but we don't do that now and uh, <laughs> i just can't imagine what it's like um so we are talking with heather earl she is a writer a blogger and an author you've written um you've written a book that uh a couple of books but the one that I think is really interesting and I want to talk about is 100 quotes for good times and bad. Can you tell me a little bit about how that came? Well, let me, first question. When did you discover that you were a good writer? Never. Never. <laughs> okay. So actually that's one of those things. I always went to writing and journaling ever since I was little, something was bothering me. Um, you know, if I just wanted to write down my day, I was always a journalist. But if, I mean, something I don't tell a lot of people is my worst subject is English, grammar, not good at it. So 
I never well, wanted. You, you sort of have, you're a frustrated engineer. I mean, you, you do all this farming, you, you probably fixed equipment, you, uh, you know, you, you're handy, you're a woodworker. Uh, you got, you know, you're probably a STEM person, science, technology, and there you are writing books, right? Am I right? It's, it's kind of a mixture. So I love getting my hands dirty, you know, and doing the engineering portion. And then I love just my quiet time and the writing because my mind never stops, which is good and bad. Right. <laughs> but so it was like 2015. And I just felt this pull, like, it, again, I love helping people. So it's kind of like the blogging where if I have something, I want to share it with somebody and maybe it'll help them out. Maybe it'll encourage them or help them live a better life for themselves. And that was kind of where my writing started. Um, I would write all the time. And a friend said, hey, let me read some of your writing. And I was like, I don't think so. And she's like, no, really, let me read it. So um, I let her read it. And she's like, Heather, you should get these published. And it took me a little while to do it. But um, I just decided, you know, even with my mistakes, there's somebody out there that this might touch or this might help. And um, so that's where my writing journey began. And I would not change that for the world now. You write a little bit about the journey itself of getting published. Uh, can you share a little bit of the life lessons that you learned about, you know, turning in a manuscript and the editing process and that sort of thing? Yeah, my goodness. So that's, I mean, I'm still learning all of that. I don't think you ever stop learning that process, but so I had no idea, right. How to publish a book or do any of that. So I just typed it online saying, Hey, how do you publish a book? And, um, you know, I got set up with a company they kind of gave me a step-by-step, -step, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is coming next. Um, the cost was a little more. It was self-publishing mm -hmm. through Westbow Press was my first one. And um, so I call it kind of like my perfect mistake. If I wouldn't have just, it was one of those decisions like, you know what, I'm going to find a company today and I'm going to start. <laughs> and if I wouldn't have done that, I don't think I would have, um, would be where I am now. Because, you know, sometimes people think too much, right? So you're like, oh, what about this? What about this? You can't make your mind up. And I'm not one of those people. I just kind of make my mind up on something and then I do it. Sometimes that's good and bad. <laughs> so the, the publishing, so they gave me a step-by-step, -step, which I love because it opened my eyes to, hey, this is what I need to do. Hey, I need to do a cover. Hey, I need to do, you know, an intro for the back. Um, so they were kind of my break in and then getting into the traditional um, publishing world is a little more intense. You, you have to have query letters where, um, you know, you're telling them what the story is about, but at the same time, giving them the ending in a short enough version that it catches their eye. And sometimes they want an entire detailed, um, I guess, script on, hey, how are you going to promote this? Is there any more books? You know, what genre is this for? So it's very, very detailed, um, but you have to be or you don't get in. You, so, so let's go back to the 100 quotes for good times and bad. Tell me how that came together and, and give me a couple of teasers from it. One that's one or two that stand out. Oh, dear. So Okay, how it came about. So I was in Ireland with my family for about eight months. We went on this crazy adventure. And I just ran across this book that had some quotes in it. And it just struck me, um, you know, I want to do this, but I want an entire book of lessons for people. they you know, good quotes and bad, you know, like if you're suffering a loss or, you know, you're just a positive thinker that you could flip through this book um, you know, most people have their phones now. So right now it's just online, but they can see, Hey, you know what? I just really need to pick me up right now. And it's like a pocketbook. I call it where it's right there. You can look it up. Um, and just, you know, just feel positive. You don't have to talk to a friend or if you're talking to a friend and you see they're kind of feeling down or just a quote hits you, you can be like, Hey, you know, maybe this will help you out and you have something ready to give to them. So that's kind of how it came about. Do you have a favorite? I don't know. It was actually really hard to put the book together um, because I left so many out. Um, I'll give you one. I don't know if this is in there or not. I can't remember now, but it's go red or go home, which is kind of my motto. Go red or go home? Go red or go home. Okay, and what does so that mean? This stemmed from my grandmother. She was a professional dancer, classical, so ballet tap point mostly point and ballet 
And she had every shade of red lipstick that you could think of. And so as a little girl, you know, we'd always try on her lipstick. And I was like, Grandma, what is, what is all this red lipstick for? And she goes, you know, Heather, just whenever I need some confidence or I'm having a bad day, I would just put on my, red, my lipstick. And then I just felt better about life. I had that confidence. And so I just came up with a thing, just go red or go home, go all in or go home. <laughs> what a great story. <laughs> yeah, she's an amazing woman. Amazing. She was a professional dancer. Yeah, in California. And she went on shows. Um, and actually, that's where she met my grandfather, who worked for NBC Studios and was the head carpenter for Bob Hope. Oh, okay. Yeah, so crazy. So that's my son. Did he travel with Bob Hope around the world when, when he went on his road shows and so forth? He did on some of them. Um, he did a lot of um, music awards. And then he did a Christmas tour overseas with the troops because my grandfather was also in World War II. Ah, so he um, went to Vietnam with Bob Hope. <clears throat> yeah. Drilling down on the, the, the Bob Hope question, did you... Did your grandfather tell you any stories about that? I'm curious, just knowing Bob Hope. You know, I talked to him a lot about Bob Hope and he had nothing but respect for that man. He said he was funny, he was kind, um, he was a good communicator. And whenever they went and traveled, I mean, you just felt like, you know, like you were family. Yeah, he, he just had amazing stories from there. Nothing but positive things to say about that man and what he did for the troops. I, I when I was much younger, because Bob, I don't know how long ago Bob Hope passed away, but I got to see him in concert, you know, um, here in Virginia. And he was well into his 80s, I would say, at the time. I don't know how long ago he passed, but he was an incredible, he was a real gift to the United States, um, just, a, just a great guy. Well, that is an interesting story, an interesting story. So let's shift gears, because I know you've got another book that you're putting together right now, a Gold Star Family Member Cookbook. Let's, let's talk about that project. Okay, so I'm gonna start you at the beginning. Um, I wrote this book called Prisoner Within. And it's going to be the first book in a four-part series. And the series is called Ordinary Heroes. And so in this book, I was creating Prisoner Within. At the end of it, one of the main characters creates this cookbook. And it just, the idea just came to me. I wanted to make this cookbook real. So this cookbook is for Gold Star family members for any branch of the military where they can submit a recipe a favorite recipe of their fallen soldier, and then a picture, and then a little script, and it will be in one of these um, cookbooks that comes out. Have you already started collecting these stories and these recipes? I have, Bob. Um, how, how are you soliciting those? Um, so just advertising through people I know, trying to get the word out to the family members, and that's the hardest part because there's a lot of um, privacy um, issues so you can't just contact them individually um, so I'm just trying to do it through um, I guess people who know them just if you know any gold star family member have them contact me send me an email um, you know at heather at heatherearls.com and they can say hey I'm a gold star family member I want to get my fallen um, soldier or you know in this cookbook a lot of our, a lot of guests on the Veteran Crowd Spotlight are exactly the people that need to hear this uh, and, and know a lot of those folks that we're in close proximity to Memorial Day. I can't think of a better project than, you know, to do exactly what you're doing. So guys out there on the network, you heard it, Heather at HeatherEarls.com. Let's get some gold star uh, recipes, uh, some of your faith, some of your friends, our lost colleagues, and, and what a great way to honor them by, uh, putting, you know, their favorite recipes into Heather's book. Tell me, tell me the four part series you've, uh, you know, uh, you, you teased me with the first one. Can you share a little bit about what else is coming and, and, and when could we expect that? Yeah, so Prisoner Within, I'm hoping will be released this year. 
And then the ones to follow. Um, what, just, what's the, what's the, can you, can you tease us with the storyline of the prisoner within, or is that, is that classified information? No, absolutely. So this one is a very special book to me because the characters are real, Bob, the, they're people I know. And it's real life and it's about struggles and different types of struggles, especially now, look what's happened in our country. And this book goes along with that. You know, you have struggles of every type. You have a guy who's sitting in prison for something he didn't do. You have a woman, you know, the main character who's just lost a ton of family. You have, um, you know, gangs, you have human trafficking. There's all kinds of stuff in this book. It's real things that are happening with real people, but put into fiction form. And even though there's a lot of struggles and a lot of pain, um, you know, there's, there's always hope. And that's what I want the books to be. There is always hope. No matter what happens, even in horrible situations, there's always hope out there. And now a word about a veteran crowd spotlight sponsor. The Severn River Leadership Group is a veteran-owned small business committed to the development and success of military veterans, first responders, elite athletes, and our community. We invest in each with our time, talent, and treasure through small business investing, coaching, and consulting. Leadership can be a very lonely place because of all of the responsibility and accountability involved and the decisions that need to be made. In today's world, small business owners and entrepreneurs need a trusted advisor in their corner to have real conversations about real life and business stuff. That's what the Severn River Leadership Group provides personal leadership, and team coaching for small business owners and entrepreneurs focused on emotional intelligence, personal and team resilience, decision-making, and team effectiveness. If you are a veteran, first responder, or elite athlete small business owner looking for a trusted advisor to help you get to the next level, connect with us online at www.severnriverleadershipgroup.com. Hey, we're talking with Heather Earl. She's a writer, blogger, and author. Heather, uh, I want to ask a question about the, about this book. You know, the prisoner within. How does a person, you know, in the rural areas of North Dakota, meet these people that are in this book? So I am a communicator, Bob. I am a people person, and whenever I travel or go somewhere. I would just strike up a conversation with somebody and then friends. So one of the main characters in this book was a friend that I grew up with in Montana and he passed away. And his sister was one of my best friends growing up. Um, and then just other people, you know, I've met some of them through Rocky in the military, you know, where we're mutual friends together. Um, so they're all over. I mean, look outside, there's people all over and I just go out and start talking with them. And I have, an amazing network of great friends now. That's really uh, interesting. And what as has has the pandemic uh, hindered some of this process? Um, no, I don't think so. For me, it's just more time, and um, so I'm busy. <laughs> and then when summertime comes and gardening and stuff, some of my writing slows down. So. Pandemic hasn't affected me in any way. I still communicate, talk to people, give them hugs, um, because I think we need human interaction. I, I agree with all of that. What, um, uh, going now, let's go back to the urban wisdom and natural living thing. How does, uh, how does a city slicker like Bob start? I mean, what, you know, so, so coach me a little bit here. I mean, I do some gardening. Uh, my wife, you know, I told you she's grew up on the farm. She has the green thumb. She can stick a stick in the ground and it'll grow. <laughs> but, you know, what, what do you tell sort of a suburban or urban person, you know, about natural living? How do they get started? So my biggest thing to start off with is what products are you using? There are so many bad ingredients, so many chemicals and products and everything you use. I don't care if it's a bar of soap, shampoo, what are you using for your cleaners? 
So those are some of the things, you know, I, I have recipes to make natural cleaners. They're not going to affect you in any way. You know, there's recipes on how to make your own soap. So all the ingredients in there are pure and clean. Um, so I would start with the basics doing that because whatever you're putting on your skin, right? A major organ in your body is absorbing that. So if we're saying washing our face with, you know, zest or a bar of soap, it has, you know, 20 chemicals in it and you can replace that. Um, your insides and outsides are going to thank you. <laughs> is that make, is that, I mean, are these causing health issues? Do you think? Absolutely. I absolutely think they are. I mean, stress is probably your biggest killer as far as health issues go. So eliminating stress is also a big one, but then the products people now, like when we were growing up, we made everything and we knew what we were putting on our skin. We knew what we were eating. And we grew up healthy. We didn't have any allergies or reactions or any problems. And I think now a lot of the issues with allergies, especially in children, is because of the extra chemicals they're being exposed to. And so it has absolutely everything to do with your health as far as what you're putting into your body. I, um, boy, now you're making me think about, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, from an allergy standpoint, uh, I have terrible seasonal allergies. I mean, do you think you can impact something like that even? I think you can a little because if you have your insides working properly, meaning you know, all the toxins cleaned out, then you know when allergies come, they don't affect you as badly, right? So say, especially, okay, say you have a poor immune system and you get a cold. Well, you're probably gonna suffer from side effects worse than somebody who has an amazing immune system and their body is functioning. They might get sniffles or something like that, but they're not gonna be you know, body sweats or sinus headache or any of that. So that's what I would compare it to as far as allergies. You're still probably gonna have some allergies, but I don't think the symptoms would be as bad. And now I'm gonna to have to go back and figure all this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, I, mean, I don't even know where to start. Hey, Heather, what, um, so you got three more, well, you've got a book that you're getting ready to publish. You've got three more on the back end of that. That sounds like a pretty full plate, but what, what, what's really, you know, what's your focus for the next six to 12 months? What are some things that you're looking forward to? And, uh, you know, what will you be working hard on? Um, so there's a couple of things. I just started a new job with a company called Puffer Print, and I am there, um, I guess, um, a specialist where I, you know, receive like all of the, the files they have coming in, digital files and stuff like that, and send them out. And I'm loving this job, Bob, because I'm a people person and I love writing. Are you a salesperson? Is it not in sales, sales? Not in sales. Um, I just communicate and I transfer files, making sure they're correct coming in for people who are wanting to write their books. So I'm probably gonna stick with that. And then as far as personal goals, um, I want I want to see the prisoner within out there. I would really hope for this um, Ordinary Heroes cookbook just to take off um, so I can get, you know, at least one of those cookbooks out there within the next, um, you know, six months to a year. Um, I want to start, I want to finish my other book, but not publish it yet. And honestly, that's probably going to, that's going to take all my time up besides just the natural things I do at home. <laughs> Interesting. How does everybody get in touch with you? How do they uh, follow you on social media? You're on a lot of social media platforms, are you not? I am. And most of the time it's just at Heather Earls. And if you want to email me, it's Heather at heatherearls.com and the last name is e-a-r-l-e-s and you can send me a you know a personal message through email you can send it to me through the blog i don't give out my phone number right now just because there's too many too many people out there that I want to sell you uh extended warranties for your automobile yeah. so yeah exactly. one. but you're on facebook instagram twitter linkedin did i miss any um, I'm on MeWe now and also Gab. Two new ones to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to look up those. MeWe and Gab. Okay. Yes, All right. Um, I got one last question for you, Heather. If you okay. could, if, if you had to go back to your, I don't know, 18 year old 
self and give yourself one piece of advice, what might that be? Um, I would say to, to go red or go home sooner. <laughs> <laughs> go home sooner. You, you've modified your grandmother's thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so just, you know, I was a little more timid and shy, like, Hey, should I be doing this? Hey, should I be doing that? And my big thing is just do it. You know, people are going to know where you stand. You're either going to make a big impact in a good way or in a bad way, but people are going to know exactly where you stand. So that'd okay. probably be one, one piece of advice for myself. All right. So uh, one quick question about your husband, special forces guy. Um, uh, how did he end up getting in the army? I'm curious. Do you know how he just. Yeah. So he got, um, he enlisted in um, 81. And then he went to ROTC and he was kind of one of those kids that like as a little boy, you know, he's shooting people in the backyard with twigs and always wanted to be in the military, always a military guy. And um, so he just knew right away that's what he wanted to do, went to ROTC, enlisted, um, you know, went into the 10th Special Forces Group, um, he, military free fall and graduated the Q course, um, I think in 1989. So. It, it was just something that was always in him. He wanted to do it, Bob. And he, he retired from the army? And then... He did, but I tell you what, that man is still active. He is a patriot to the end. So he gets people together for constitutional classes, is very um, active in our little town as far as um, he was running for county commissioner. He does not like politics, but he likes, he likes the right kind of change. He likes leadership. <laughs> He, he likes leadership. To the end. Well, hey, it, you know, it, uh, we've we've come to the end of our time. We've had Heather Earls on. She is the uh, author of the book One Hundred Quotes for Good Times and Bad. Uh, working on another book called The Prisoner Within, which we're looking forward to seeing. She's also the host of the Urban Wisdom podcast, uh, Urban Wisdom and Natural Living. Look it up and and listen in. And, uh, you know, Heather, thank you so much for stepping into the spotlight. I really appreciate you being a guest on today's program. Yeah, thank you so much, Bob. And thank you for what you do for the veterans and just highlighting. It's a, it's a pleasure to do it. Hey, uh, Heather, thanks for stepping into the spotlight. You've been listening to the spotlight on the Veteran Crowd Network. Uh, we publish on Tuesdays and Fridays and bring people within our community that are making a difference. And certainly Heather Rolls is doing that. Hey, Heather, go tell your husband that I gave a big Bravo Zulu to you. He'll know exactly what I mean, folks. And that's a wrap. Thank you for listening to Spotlight by Veteran Crowd. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and uploads, please visit our website at VeteranCrowdNetwork.com. We'll see you next time.